In this video we're going to go over compound interest and we'll do these examples uh, 5, 6 and 7. So let's start with example 5. What happens when you invest $1,000 at 6% compound interest for 4 years? So in this one we'll just go over it to totally understand what's going on. And we'll look at we'll start with looking at the end of year 1 and then calculate what the interest is. Okay. So at the end of year 1 and then one thing I forgot to put in here was annual, sorry about that. This should be invest $1000 at 6% uh, annual compound interest for 4 years. Um so the interest will be 6% of 1000, right? Which is Have you got that? It'll be 0 0.06, right? Multiplied by 1000, right? Which is which is $60, right? So um, basically what we're going to do is make this table and then you know we're going to compare it to example one where we invested $1,000 at 6% simple, in simple interest for four years. Okay, So we're going to do the exact same thing only do annual compound interest. Right. Um, so there's the interest and let's have a look at the uh, balance now. The balance of course is going to be what you started with plus the interest and we started with a thousand dollars and now we have um, sixty dollars so the balance is going to be uh, one thousand and sixty dollars right so year two and this is compound interest which means that we earn interest on top of other interest we earn interest not just on the principal of 1000 but we earn interest on whatever happens to be in the account even if it includes old interest like the sixty dollars so at the end of year two our interest is in fact sixty percent of one thousand and sixty not just one thousand so when we did simple interest the end of year two the interest was six percent of one thousand which was the principal the amount of money put in but with compound interest you get interest on top of other interest, old interest, let's say. And so, what does it this give? Well, it's going to be 0 0.06 times 1060, which is, what does that make in your calculator? sixty three sixty right sixty three point six or sixty three dollars sixty and so the balance is going to be what was in there at the end of year one plus the new interest right so that's going to be one thousand uh, one hundred and twenty three sixty right At the end of year three, how much interest do we get? Press pause and see if you can do it. You're going to get 6% of what? Every year you get 6% of something. 6% of what's already in there, right? 1, 1, 2, 3, 60, right? And so that is 0 0.06 times 1, 1, 2, 3, 60. Which is 67.416, right? Um, and if you were pushed you could approximate that to be to the nearest cent if you're asked to 
42, right? Um, and so I guess we'll add that onto this, and that'll give us that plus the old balance of 1123.60. So the new balance would be 1191.02. Right? So at the end of year four, what's in the account? It's going to be six percent. The interest is going to be six percent of the one one nine one point zero two. So we'll calculate that and then we'll add it on to the balance, right? And so, look, if this number is already in your calculator, and I've got 1191.016, you know, just times that by 0 0.06. See that? Or 0 0.06. And then press Enter. And you can also do that with, you know, uh, a little, ca any calculator should be able to do that. If you already have the answer in there, just press multiply by you know, 0 0.06 and it'll figure it out for you, right? Okay, so that gives me 71.46096, which approximately to the nearest cent would be $71.46 interest at the end of that year, right? And then this is already in the calculator and it has not just the 46 cents but all of the other parts of that number so to make sure I don't make a mistake in my final calculation I'm going to add that in fact I'm going to uh, just to be perfectly accurate I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do this number was um, in fact 1191.016 I'm actually going to add the 71.46096 to that. So the, the whole things, just so I, because I don't want to round, you know, at these points along the way, because my final answer will be a little bit off if I do that. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add the 1191.016, and that gives me, um, 1262.4796 which is approximately and we'll give this as the answer of course the final answer 1262.4 and this rounds up the 6 rounds up so 48 cent so $1262.48 and so the point I'm trying to make is don't there's and this is this is what you needed. The question was, you know, invest this at compound interest for four years. And what I want, but, but if you're asked to give, the, what's the balance after four years? While you're calculating, don't round stuff, because you want all those little details just to make sure your final answer is as accurate as possible. And even better, we're going to use a formula for this soon, and that'll be even better. But but uh, just just a word of advice. Okay. So the first thing to do with this is to compare it to our example one where we had simple interest. And I want you to, to note all the different things that are happening. First look at the interest column. So example one was invest $1,000 at 6% simple interest for four years. And this example five is $1,000 at 6% annual compound interest for four years. And if we look at the interest table, okay, look at how different the interests are. Uh, Exam simple interest every year we added on sixty dollars, didn't we? That was the interest, right? But with the compound interest, the first year we added on sixty, but then we added on sixty three sixty. And then we added on sixty seven forty two approximately. And then we added on seventy one forty six. Okay. So what's different? This is the simple interest, this is the compound. What's the difference between simple interest and compound interest? The simple interest stays the same. Constant, right? It's the same every year because it's the percentage 
of the principal of the thousand dollars you put in the account. Compound interest, what does compound interest do? Does it increase or does it decrease? The compound interest actually interest actually increases, it goes up because you are getting interest on the previous balance and the previous balance includes all interest like this balance was a thousand and sixty dollars that was the sixty dollars from year one and then we got six percent of that so we're getting interest not only of one thousand like we did with this with the simple interest but interest of a thousand and sixty so interest of the thousand plus sixty so we're getting interest on top of interest and that amount was in fact three dollars sixty cents this this three dollars sixty cents is interest on top of interest right and the sixty dollars is just the interest on the principal right so let's write that down interest of or on interest on interest was in this case three dollars sixty cents so that's something to note see that it's a little bit more and then of course the next time you do it you get even more than sixty dollars interest you get sixty seven forty two and then it goes up again to seventy one forty six because you ke you're keeping getting interest on the the previous balance so you're getting interest on the principal but also interest on top of old interest right so the first thing I want you to do is write down a couple of times what compound interest means. Again, when you write things down, that's how it sticks in your long-term memory. I already don't know this, and I'm writing it down, so let's all do it. All right, so compound interest is paid on the principal and on the interest already earned or on the interest. If you just want to leave it at that, that'll probably work. Compound interest is paid on the principal and on the interest already earned. That type of interest. Okay, so write it out again. Compound interest, I'll erase it, is paid, this isn't as much writing as an English class, remember, one sentence, on the principal, what does principal mean? It's the thousand dollars that was put in there, right? And on the interest already earned. Okay, the next thing I want to do, so hopefully we understand that, and, and now that you've written it down twice, it might stick in your long-term memory, and you'll remember it for a test. That would be nice, right? that's the magic of writing things down that's why I get you guys to do written work otherwise you, you would see it and you would get it and then you would forget it the next day and it, it doesn't do any good in, when you're taking your test or when you're uh, trying to do your homework or when you're trying to take another math class after this or whatever so anyway that's why we write things down to remember them for w one reason but um, so what I want to do is uh, go over the formula for calculating this right off the bat um, and you hopefully remember it because we just covered it. You'll see what it, what it, what it looks like. Um, end of year one, what happened? If we just look at the balance, okay, we're just looking at the balance, right? End of year one, the balance is the um, one thousand dollars, right? plus the six percent of one thousand so it's the but it's the principal plus interest on the balance right on, on the initial amount and we calculate that to be a thousand and sixty but what I want you to do is to uh, do a distributive property in reverse I want you to factorize this expression by pulling out one thousand and say that that is 1,000 times what? Fill in the parentheses. Do you remember how to do this? So you're pulling out a common factor of these two terms. A thousand is a common factor of both terms. You can see it in both terms. And a thousand times what gives a thousand? A thousand times one, right? 
A thousand times watt gives 0 0.06. 0 0.06, right? So my point is, this is the same thing because, look, if you take this mul thousand and multiply it in with the distributive property, a thousand times one gives a thousand, and a thousand times 0 0.06 gives, you know, 0 0.06 times a thousand, or 1,000 plus 60 dollars, right? This times this is 60. So we're reversing the distributive property, pulling out of grace common factor as we've done before, and this will help us figure out the formula for compound interest. Okay? Now, um, year two. This is the balance. Where did that come from? Um, we started with 1060. Let's go here, 1060, and we got 6% of 1060 or 0.06 times 1060. Sorry about that. I'm going to put that in. Okay. What's a common factor to both of these terms? Again, the 1060. I would like you now to pull out the common factor from both terms and see what you get. If you pull out 1060, it's 1060 times what? 1060 times what gives 1060? 1060 times 1, right? 1060 times what gives this thing? 0 0.06, okay? So in other words, we, we get to here, and now we know though that 1060 from the last example is of course the same thing as 1000 times 1 plus 0 point, uh, 0 0.06. So our 1060 can be written like this. 1000 times 1 plus 0 point 0.06. That's 1060, isn't it? But the the this thing one one two three point sixty this is is one thousand sixty times one point uh, times one plus zero point zero six so we've got this and then we also have times one plus zero point zero six so in other words after two years the balance is in fact one thousand times this times this and these two things are the same. So can we use an exponent on that? We can use a squared because it's this times this, same thing, times that squared. And the 1060, of course, is 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.06. And does this look familiar? This is the exact same thing as the exponential formula, which is pretty cool because we get to use it twice, right? And after three years, what's the formula going to be? for the balance. It's going to be, this thing is going to be, um, let me just take that out of there, sorry. 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power of, so when it's 2 years, we square, when it's 3 years, we cube this, right, to the power of 3, right? And let's just check, why don't we go ahead and check to make sure that that does indeed give 1191.02. And if you have a, a you know what, I'm going to do this on a dinky little calculator just to show you that it works here too. I don't think I've shown you this before, but it works just fine on this. So if I was to calculate that, I would just start with the 1 uh, plus 0 0.06 you see because that's a thousand times 1.06 to the power of 3 so I'm going to go 1.06 that's what this is right and then I'm going to put it to the power of 3 now the button I need for that is um, so here, here's what I'm typing in I'm typing in 1.06 and then I'm going to type the button that has an X and a little Y on it. So you might have something like that if you have a dinky little calculator Casio thing. 
and then I'm going to type 3 so x to the power of y then 3 and then equals right so I'm, I've typed in 1.06 this button then I type in 3 then I type equals right and that gives me this number uh, 1.191016 okay then instead of typing this in and multiplying it by a thousand it's already there just hit multiply by one thousand and then equals okay and that gives me one one nine one point zero one six which is approximately your one one nine one point zero two isn't it right so what's the formula after four years write down the formula and calculate it and make sure it's the same as this number here the compound interest formula after four years you got a thousand dollars and it's times what to the power of what times 1.06 or 1 plus 0 0.06 I kind of like to put the plus in there because it shows it's times 1 plus the rate to the power of the number of compoundings, which is 4. Okay? 4 years, 4 compoundings. It's annual compound interest. Um, when we do monthly compound interest, there'll be a compounding every month. And so this number here will reflect like, you know, 12 months in a year and things like that. But anyway, calculating this, I'll do it on this little calculator again you just go 1.06 and then the xy x to the power of y button here 4 equals 1.2624 blah 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 and instead of typing that out again just hit times 1000 and then equals okay and sure we sure enough we get 1262.47696 right 1260.47696 is what we calculated earlier and that does need round to um, $1,262.48 so the point is the formula is a lot faster than doing it by hand but it is nice to do it by hand once or twice just so we get a, a good feel and a good idea of what's going on okay so anyway the next example is we're going to invest five thousand dollars in an account that pays compound interest of three percent each year we're going to find the total interest earned at the end of four years we're going to find the balance of the account at the end of one two three four years ten years twenty years two years now you can do the table if you want or you can do the formula but uh, either way you're going to have to calculate what's going on um, I'm just going to do the uh, formula because we've gone over the exponential formula we've just gone over it in, in, uh, uh, in the last example so I think we should be fine with it And but if you want to calculate the interest separately here and then the balance that's fine I'm just going to do the end of year uh, 1 we've got 2, 3, 4 and then we got to do 10, 20 and T and I'm just going to look at the balance is what I'm saying okay so the amount of money we're investing and again I forgot to put in annual compound interest just to distinguish that from monthly or weekly or daily compound interest this is annual so it's three percent each year but you know if it says compound interest three percent you know each year I mean you, you would you would imagine um, that that would in fact be annual but anyway so end of year one what's the balance well using the formula we had last time we would you would take the the five thousand right and you would multiply that by one plus what what's three percent as a decimal three percent is three per hundred which is 0 0.3 or 0 0.03 3 cents 
three cents looks like this three cents of a dollar 0 0.03 right it's three cents three percent it's not 30 cents it's three cents so it's 0 0.03 right and so after one year we just get 5,000 times itself plus 5,000 times 0 0.03 which is the interest right let's see that for, for fun 5,000 times it's times one would be 5,000 5,000 times 0 0.03 would be 0 0.03 times that would be um, $150, right? And then you add it on and that's 5150 right? So the balance, and of course you could just type this into your calculator and again I'll just use my little Casio so you can see how to do it. So 1.03 is what that is if you add them, right? It's 1.03 and then times 5000 and then equals and 5150, right? After two years, what's the balance? Again, I'm just going to use the formula. You can do the, the whole interest column if you like. But So we start with the principal of 5,000. And then we multiply it by 1 plus the rate and we put it to the power of what? to the power of 2 for 2 years right? and again I'm going to calculate that in my little Casio here just in case you have one like that just so you can see how to use these things well you would take your 1.03 because again this is just you know 5000 times 1.03 squared so you take your 1.03, then you hit the X to the power of Y button, and um, then hit 2, and then go equals, and you should get 1.0609. Okay, and then you times that by 5,000. Okay, so we're doing PEMDAS. We're doing what's in the parentheses to get the 1.03. Then PEMDAS says we do exponents next, and we're squaring, yes, and then we multiply by 5,000, right? And that gives us 5304.50, okay? So please calculate what's in the account at the end of year 3, year 4, year 10, year 20, and year T. So I'm going to let you guys do that, and then I'm going to race through it myself. So I hope you know enough now to do this. Please press pause because I'm going to do it really, really fast in a few seconds time. So please press pause and do this. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. I'm going to do it really fast now. So we have figured out that the, the compound interest formula is the same, looks the same as the exponential formula which we did go over. And I hope you understand how it goes. You take the principal, you multiply it by one, uh, by itself plus three percent or whatever the percentage is, and you do that. You multiply it by this thing as many. Uh, you do a compounding every year for three years, and that's why this is cubed because it's five thousand times this thing three times, right? For three years, and then you. Um, calculate that and so my little calculator here that's 1.03 to the x to the power of y to the power of 3 equals that and then times 5000 equals and I'm getting 5463.635 and we need to round that so I'm going to round that to the nearest cent 5463.64 okay excuse me to save. So in four years it's 5,000 <coughs> Excuse me. times 1 plus 0 0.03 to the power of the number of years. Four, or the number of compounding, so there's a compounding every year. And again, I'll just start completely again. I take my 1.03, x to the power of y to the power of 4. So I do my exponent first. You know, I do the parentheses, I add 1 and 0 0.03, then I do the exponent, pair of 4, and then I multiply by 5,000. Right? 
So I hope you've pressed pause and tried this because I'm just doing this really quickly. And please press pause now and try it if you haven't already. And so this whole long thing is approximately to the nearest cent what? What's that to the nearest cent? To the nearest cent? 5,627.54, right? After 10 years, so you can see how it's, it's, it's going up. 150 the first year, second year, um, $304.50 and so on. I'm just going to pause there because there's another question I wanted you to figure out is find the total interest earned at the end of four years. What is the total interest earned at the end of four years now that we're compounding, uh, now that we're using compounding interest? Well, we started with $5,000. At the end of four years, we have 5,627.54. How much interest is made? Well, here's your interest, the 627.54, right? Isn't that the interest? That's the interest, isn't it? because that's the amount that's above 5,000, which is what we started with. If we compare that to example 2, where we had simple interest, we'll see the difference. When we looked at example 2, it was the exact same question, only simple interest. It was invest $5,000 in an account that pays simple interest of 3% each year. Okay, And find the total interest earned at the end of 4 years. With simple interest, we had we had $600. With compound interest, we have 627.54. So a little bit more, because compound interest gives you interest on top of interest of previous interest, whereas the simple interest just gives just gives you interest on the balance, interest on the $5,000. That's it, right? So that's comparing. You can see how compound interest gives you more money than simple if you're looking at a, a savings account and so calculate these if you haven't done so yet at the end of year 10 the end of year 20 and the end of year T how much money do we have in the account press pause and do these guys and then I'll do it okay I'll do it now hope you've tried it you'll have 5000 times 1.03 or 1 plus 0 0.03 let's say to the power of 10 right which is and again 1.03 x to the power of y 10 equals times 5000 equals and so I'm just trying to show you with this dinky little calculator I can get the exact answer right the same way as I showed earlier so this gives us 6719 point five eight one eight etc which is approximately six seven one nine and to the nearest cent what's this to the nearest cent fifty eight and the number after fifty eight is a one so we round down so it's fifty eight right after twenty years what's in the account press pause and do it if you haven't done it yet I'll do it now. It's got to be 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03 or 1.03, same thing, to the power of 20, which is... So you take your 1.03 times x to the power of y, and then 20 equals 1.8061112235. Then multiply that by your 5,000 and then equals and it gives you a whole thing so you don't have to round during the calculation you the calculator is storing all these digits past the decimal point you want to keep as many of those as you can while you're calculating the final answer so that you are not um, 0.5561 so you don't get the wrong answer okay so that's 9030.5 and to round this to the nearest cent, we've got 0.55 and then there's a 6. So do we round up or do we round down? 
we round this guy up to six, right? So point fifty point five six. So uh, nine thousand thirty dollars fifty six cents. So after t years, what's the balance? Can you write it down? That's going to be five thousand times one plus the rate zero point zero three to the power of how many years? How many compoundings to the power of t, right? And the compound interest formula is in fact um, the principal. You take your principal, your amount, right? You multiply it by one plus what? Plus the rate or the percentage and then it's to the power of t, the number of years. Does that make sense? I mean you can write it in words if you want to. Principle times one plus the rate to the power of uh, the years or number of compoundings because it's not always going to be years it might be months soon but that's the general formula principle times one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of compoundings okay so I'm just going to give you this one to do by yourself completely and then I'm just gonna press pause you know, so invest nine thousand dollars in an account that pays annual compound interest of two point four percent. So I really want you just consider this a homework question. Press pause, do the whole thing, and then I'll do it. So hopefully you know enough now to do it. So find the pause button. Please press pause in your video and do this whole thing. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it because I'm going to do it now really fast. I'm just going to do it so you can check your answer. I'm not going to. I'll try not to explain too much about it, but I'm just going to do it so you can check your answer. So the first thing you should have made sure to do was to turn this into the correct decimal. 2.4% is 2.4 per 100. Now if you plug that in your calculator, and you can do that, you know, 2.4 divide by, oh sorry, 2.4 divide by 100, you'll get 0 0.024. Okay, so the first thing you got to make sure is you, that you get this correct. Some of you like to move the decimal point two spaces to the left, that's fine. Just remember to put in a zero because it's point zero two four. Okay. Anyway, that's the first thing. Um, and I'll just do a little um, table just to, to, to sh show all this. So we've got end of year five. This is the balance of the account at the end of year five. And the balance is going to be like in the formula that we, we figured out, the balance is always the principal times 1 plus whatever the interest rate is to the power of t, the number of compoundings. So, um, or time, or con compoundings. Now, so the balance is the principal, which is $9,000, uh, times 1 plus the rate, 0 0.024, to the power of t, the number of compoundings, which is 5 in this case, right? And so, you might uh, plug that in, or you might have ri I've written it like this, 1.024 to the power of 5, which is the same thing, okay? So 1, do this again, 0 0.024 x to the power of y, uh, 5 equals this long number. So instead of having to write that out, your calculator has that number. Then just go multiply by 9,000 equals, and you're done. Okay, so we get uh, $10,133.0996, uh, right, cent. Let's round that to the nearest dollar, or to the nearest cent, I mean to the nearest cent, and what do you get? $10,133, and uh, let's see, this number here is a 9. So we need to do that in red. That number there is a 9, so we need to round up. But the next number is a 9, so that this whole thing becomes a 10, basically, right? It gets rounded up, right? So um, 10 years, what did you get for 10 years? Hopefully you got $9,000 times 1 plus the interest rate, 0 0.024 to the power of? 10, right? 
and um, again I can do this in, in it'd be great if you have a calculator like this so you can type it all in and just press enter if you have a uh, lesser calculator you can start with oops isn't turning on oh, there, oh. Okay, I'll get that in a minute anyway um, so this one should be 9000 times 1.024 to the power of 10 so um, the answer should be 1, 1408.8554 and so on approximately making eleven thousand four hundred and eight dollars and this is eighty five cents but after that becomes a, there's a five so whether we round up or down on that five you round up so it's point eighty six right and then we have twenty years what'd you get for twenty years hopefully nine thousand times one plus the interest rate to the power of twenty which gives Uh, one four four six two point four four two four, which is approximately what to the nearest cent. You got a point, and then four four two. So if this is a digit is a two. Do we round up or down? We round down, right? So one four four six two point forty four forty four cent, right? And then after t years. At the end of t years, what's the balance of this account? Did you get this? So for 20 years, the 20 goes up here. What happens to the t? You get $9,000 times 1, you know, plus 0 0.024 to the power of t, right? Or you could just write that 9,000 times 1.024 to the power of t, whatever you prefer.